trailer all loaded up with some fresh vegetable plants. I'm gonna be clearing some out of the vegetable garden today that are done, bolted, done for the season, and then putting in some fresh ones. I've also noticed the areas in my garden, and I don't know if this is the same for you guys, but I noticed the holes. I noticed where like, oh yeah, I forgot that I have a hole there, and I didn't plan to put anything there this year. And you can only do so much in a season. So what I like to do this time of year when I start seeing those holes is I'll go grab squash plants in particular, um, and then I'll plant those in those holes because they kind of meander around and fill in areas so beautifully and you get some produce in the end or whether or not it's to eat or to decorate with I don't care either way it's just a good way to or a good use of the extra space um, and it gives you something pretty and it gives you something in the end so that's kind of what I'm doing today I also wanted to talk to you guys about some of the insecticides that I use in my garden space and I've been noticing that question come up more and more as we've been posting more about the vegetable garden which is right behind me and as you can see it's a really nice day out today it's warm it's been on and off really sunny but and still but now the wind of course is starting to pick up right when I start to want to come out here and do projects but that's okay makes it comfortable um, so let me turn the camera around and I'll show you the top three insecticides that I've been using this year and there's the three right there on my dirty table so this is the first one this one's called sluggo plus this one I use mostly for snails and earwigs in my area, um, but it is good for other things. You can see there's things labeled there, and I think there's even more on the back label. But the active is iron phosphate and spinosad. So this is an organic. I use it every about seven to 14 days. It's kind of a grain. You can hear it in there. I bait around the base of my plants, usually around in my vegetable garden, hostas and coleus benefit the most, it seems like for me. The next one is the thuricide or BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, which is actually um, a bacteria that's found in the soil. So this is also a natural. Um, this helps uh, prevent budworms or helps keep them at bay. That's what my biggest problem is in this area because they just ravage my supertunias and superbells. Like if I didn't spray with this, there would be no point in me planting those annuals because they would just eat all the buds right off of them. Um, so this I use weekly, so I go through a ton of it, and this is a liquid concentrate. And then I use a lot of the Captain Jack's dead bug. This one I use mostly for spider mites. Spider mites are a huge problem in our area, mostly on my boxwoods and um, my dahlias. So this helps a lot with that. I honestly feel like that could be a video all its own because those are kind of the top three I'm using right now. Um, but there are others that I use in other, you know, for other insect pests. Um, plus, you know, it's just a huge subject. I try to stay as organic as possible whenever possible. Um, if I have a really bad outbreak of something, I am not opposed to bringing out a synthetic if it works the best and it keeps the plants healthier. Of course, don't use anything near my vegetable garden that's not organic. That spot's been completely kind of isolated. Um, so anyway, those are the three I use right now. I just thought that maybe that would be helpful to some of you guys if you're dealing with anything like that. But that's the stuff like the thuricide I use like on uh, cabbage and anything where there's like leaf miners, that kind of thing that burrow through and eat my leaves, any caterpillary type <laughs> insect pest, I use that and it's just been keeping all of my stuff super clean. Okay, so I've got the trailer loaded like I said, so let me go show you what's in it. So this is actually something I'm very excited about. Proven Winners has come out with a couple varieties of new tomato coming out next year. I was able to get my hands on a few of them to trial them here and see how they do. So this one's called Garden Treasure. Grows up to three feet. Uh, so it's more of a determinate sized plant, so it stays smaller. And they look really nice. And then there's this one right here. This one's called Garden Gem. It's more of a plum shaped tomato you can see there. And I was reading up on this one and it says that this can get up to 22 pounds of fruit on it. So that's exciting. And then this right here is a Mazel Basil. First of all, I love the name because that's something super easy to remember. It smells so good. And I've already got Genevieve's planted in the garden. So I'm excited to get this one planted and kind of be able to compare. And then I've got just kind of a pile of mishmash that I brought home from the garden center. There's an a classic eggplant, which I actually don't like to eat eggplant, but I like to grow them because they're pretty. I like to decorate with them. Uh, and then there is a green zebra tomato. I've got autumn delight squash and a delica squash over here. A weeby little pumpkin. Icebox watermelon. 
buttercup squash. So that's what I'm gonna start with today. Let's roll over to the place where I'm gonna put them in the ground. Oh. My coffee cup. So we're in the southwest corner of our garden. You can see the line of arborvitas right there, which are doing excellent. They've put on a lot of growth actually this year. They're getting like wider. We're really excited for them to form a wall. Um, but I'm at the end where we stopped them and there's quite a distance to go to get to the end of the property. And we had planned on uh, starting to plant this up pretty heavily with other trees and things. Um, and we have planted several things, but you know, it's going to be a while. So there's a birch tree there, but you can see all the empty space. That's where I'm going to be planting the tomatoes and a few of the squash. I did start a video out here the other day where I planted up, I'll show you the two areas, and it got so windy and so rainy and then I got the lens like all messy and I didn't realize it. And Aaron went to edit it and he was like, we can't use this. Nobody can see what you're doing. <laughs> so I just didn't even realize. So this right here is the first spot. This is where the big elm tree was. Uh, it was right here and they ground the stump out and honestly we thought about uh, reseeding grass but we know that we're going to be tearing out a lot of this sod anyway probably next year so we just didn't want to go to the extra effort of seeding it and getting it up and nice and then just tearing it out again so i used three vertigo penicetums and some supertunia bubblegum which as you know this bubblegum would totally fill this in i think it'll be pretty because people drive down the driveway right here so there'll just be a nice little island of color right here I've got the red point maple planted there, which looks like it's kind of getting a little bit of a lean, uh, which I actually don't stake trees unless they start to lean. So this is one I'll probably bring a stake home for. And then the other spot right here is where we had a great big old lilac. Um, and that was just removed this spring. So I brought home a couple of Cinderella pumpkins. I love to decorate with these and I love the look of pumpkin vines so they'll just fill in this area right here and be pretty. It's kind of random I know but I love it when I go to people's gardens and I see random things being done. It makes it look kind of fun and interesting. Okay so I think I'm going to put tomatoes in here first and then we'll start in with squash and see how far we get. All right, I got them all planted. So the blue Hubbard is there. Then we've got the weeby little pumpkin, then the acorn squash, then the delica squash, and then here are the tomatoes. So we've got garden gem right here, which is in a little bit more of a flimsy cage. It's all I had left though. I actually bent it when I was trying to put it in the ground, so I might have to replace that. Green zebra, which is a wonderful green heirloom tomato. And look at that, it's already got one on there. So exciting. I might have to uh, put an additional stake up out of this cage because this is an indeterminate tomato and they want to grow quite large. And then there's the garden treasure right there, uh, which is kind of the uh, more slicer type tomato only supposed to grow about 36 inches tall and wide. So I think this cage will be perfect. So I actually have three garden treasure tomatoes and I thought it would be a really interesting test to plant one here in the ground, one in one of my raised beds, and then the last one in a container. And I'll give them all the same care, all the same full sun, you know, situation, lighting situation, but I wanna see how they grow, if they grow differently based on where they're put. I think that'll be really fun to see at the end of the season. Um, so the only other things I have left to plant then in my cart are the eggplant, the watermelon, and the basil. So let's head to the vegetable garden. Uh, I should probably water these in first. <laughs> I forgot that step. I actually have drip tubing running through this space. Let me show you. So there's black poly tubing that runs through right here and it runs and feeds all of the arborvitas. I was going to tap into it and, you know, put an emitter to each one of these plants, but the grass sprinklers, I think, overspray this area pretty good. And the soil was pretty wet when I was digging in there. So I think I'm going to leave it and see how it goes and I'll add emitters if I have to. Look at this. Gopher, gopher. Gah. I am so thankful that we put in a faucet over here. This right here wasn't here when we moved in. And we decided last year when we had everything trenched up uh, for the electrical, we decided to run a few extra water faucets. I am so glad we did that. I mean, that was a good move because I use them like crazy. All right, so here's the vegetable garden. It's looking gorgeous. And I wanted to show you guys something that Gardener Supply just sent out. 
So these are an SX round trellis. I thought that they would be so pretty and way prettier than a traditional tomato cage for this garden space in particular. Look at that. Look at how pretty that is. So they actually come in a seven foot and a five foot size. I got the seven foot size, but I did uh, take one level out, which was really easy to do just for now because the tomatoes are not near tall enough and it would have looked kind of weird. But I can always add those back in if I find that the tomatoes are growing and need the extra space. But I think they're the perfect proportion for this area right now. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. See all these greens? I cut on them and cut on them and we ate them. And then they finally just went to kind of seed. They're going to seed right now. They started to bolt because it started to get really hot. So I'm going to clear this section of that bed out, which will leave me like a three by three space. And I'm going to plant uh, the eggplant in this area. So this is the next one I'm going to clean out. There are two cabbages left. I had four altogether and we've been eating them. In fact, I put six out of the seven of our dinners in the next week have cabbage incorporated in them just so I make sure to use them all up. Um, so I think I'm going to plant the other garden treasure tomato right here in that space. There is a cucumber there that I tucked in when those two cabbage were still growing. Um, so this one doesn't get super huge and I figured if it wanted to vine, it could vine out here and it'd be totally fine. Now I just need to find some room for that watermelon. Oh, I guess I should show this off. So this is not permanent, but you guys know that I designed this garden space to where I'd have a very formal like middle. And I was debating on having a fountain there or a big pot. I couldn't decide. And I happen to have this base. This is a fountain base. The rest of the fountain doesn't work anymore. So I just converted it to a container, planted it up with a little Dichondra Silver Falls. This is Diamond Mountain Euphorbia and Super Tunia Royal Magenta. Uh, the magenta, you know, I planted a ton of it on our barn. So I kind of wanted to match that. Anyway, I just wanted kind of a placeholder until I find the right thing. I just haven't found something that spoke to me yet. Beans are coming up and peppers are doing great. I mean, look at this. I don't know if you can see all of those peppers, but there's like 15, 18. I don't know, there's a ton of them on this plant. About ready to harvest garlic, uh, as well as potatoes. They're doing really well. They're coming out of their box. I think what I'm gonna do is tuck the watermelon right in here. There's nothing planted here right now. There's a little dill plant and some basil. Um, so I'll tuck it in here, and that way it can trail out over the side and be fine. Still haven't decided if I wanna put these boxes in containers or in the ground. So here they sit. I just water them every day. But a couple other updates. Walla Walla onions are looking great. They're starting to bulb up beautifully. Look at that. Oh, so exciting. Anyway, I'm just so pleased with how everything's growing, especially being the first year out here in this garden. I was a little worried, to be honest, about the soil that we had in the raised beds. I mean, I got the premium stuff from a place here, local, kind of locally in Boise, Idaho. Um, and but it compacted pretty hard like it sat here all winter I didn't touch it so uh, you know it had the winter moisture and everything and I had to work that soil pretty good to loosen it up so I was a little bit worried especially like with onions and potatoes that they were gonna have a hard time forming but as far as I can tell everything is loving it so I am now a believer <laughs> in that soil mix okay I'm gonna clean out the lettuce first Aren't those cabbage beautiful? Okay, so the garden treasure tomato is gonna go right here. I just have the one last garden treasure tomato to find a container for so I can plant that. I'll probably put it out here in this space just because I drag the hose out to water those boxes every day anyway. So I may as well just put it in here along with everything else. And then I need to take the cabbage inside that I just harvested and they are so beautiful and unload my bag full of lettuce in my compost bins, which I will show you today. All right, gotta take a look at some containers and see what to put the tomato in. Probably not those. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go just with this terracotta right here.
So this is my little attempt at composting this year. I just started to fill them up here not too long ago. I've got a really good carbon layer going. Uh, and then, so this is really cool. These right here are for your kitchen compost crock. And they're bags that you can line the crock with so that the, it doesn't get all gross inside. Um, and they're compostable. So you can just, you know, pull the bag out and toss them right in the compost pile. And this is just a bunch of like junk, like uh, vegetable trimmings and stuff like that from the kitchen. And you can see I pulled out some cabbage yesterday. And then this was the stuff from today. So we don't have any large scale compost system set up on our property yet. It's kind of strange because we do garden on two acres, but all of it is heavily landscaped. It was when we moved in. Um, in fact, the only space that was kind of not used is this area behind the barn, which, you know, it's not very big. It's not very deep. And we do have to leave a lane through it to be able to drive the lawn tractor back here to get firewood. Um, so we'd either have to rip out a garden, we'd have to rip out plants and grass or something, or, you know, I'm gonna utilize this space for now. So I figured that this was kind of a good way just to get in a little bit of composting here on our property. This is just meant for the stuff that I'm getting out of my own vegetable garden, hoping to turn it back into compost to then amend my vegetable garden beds. Um, so I'm just gonna start there and see how it goes. So I think that's where I'm gonna end the video, you guys, because we're kind of in between wind gusts here. It just keeps getting windy and then dying down and then really windy, and it's kind of getting a little bit worse. So anyway, I hope in the next video I'll have a chance to address some perennial care, kind of what you do midsummer, because it's kind of where I'm well, it's where we're all at right now. Um, it's what we're all dealing with. I know that my flower beds are starting to look a little bit tired because the first flush of perennials are done. So it's time to shear them back and start over again um, and give them some energy so that they can put on a show later on this season. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.